This video and every video on this channel is made possible by your support on patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. I couldn't do this without you and your contributions keep this channel alive. You can also grab an official shirt over on prowrestlingtees.com slash 616 entertainment. What's up, Dan Dans? My name is Ian. Thank you for checking out my review of Halloween Ends. Now, here's what you need to know. If you watched my Halloween Kills review last year, you know that I did it in an audio format. It was like a podcast sort of review. This is not a 10 minutes, it's good or it's bad sort of deal. This is like a full podcast. So, I'm on camera now to do this introduction, but after I get this out of the way, go ahead and minimize the window and just listen. You don't need to watch me talk for over an hour. There's no point to that, and it would have been like a 50 fucking gigabyte file that I would need to upload. Fuck that, not doing it. Now, many of you have asked if there will be a History of Halloween Part 6 that will cover Halloween 2018, kills, and ends, and that's a perfectly valid question, and here's your answer. Yes, there will be, but not right now. Needs a little bit of time to gestate, you know? Kills is only a year old. Halloween ends is like a week old at the time that you're watching this, literally a week old. You can't do a retrospective on something that's brand new. You can do a review, but in a retrospective, you need to be looking back on something. It needs to be in the rear view mirror. So I'm gonna say next year, look for the history of Halloween part six. I think that makes sense. That's not that far away. And I've got plenty of Halloween slash horror content coming your way between now and then. What do I mean by that? I mean, you guys helped me break the goal. Scream sequence, razor sharp reviews of your favorite creepy classics is officially confirmed for a full season. We're gonna cover Child's Play, we're gonna cover Silent Hill, we're gonna cover anything and fucking everything because you sh- you- I can't even speak. We're gonna cover it all because you guys showed up and supported me and I- if, I, if I'm coming off like I'm fucking excited, it's because I'm really excited. I can't wait to get to work on it, but yeah, Halloween Ends is a really divisive movie. Uh, a lot of people fucking hate it. Some people are saying like, you know what? I actually think it's pretty good, but I didn't like this and I didn't like that. It's all over the place. I'm gonna talk your ear off for an hour and tell you what I thought of it top to bottom, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Oh, what's up, Dan Dans? My name is Ian. I, maybe I did an intro already. I don't know. I'm sure there's gonna be some supplemental part at the beginning of this. Look, it's time to talk about Halloween Ends. The movie has come out. We've all seen it. I hope you've seen it, because I'm going full spoilers, just so you know. So if you don't want to know what happens... Make sure you turn this off, come back later, all right? It's time to talk about Halloween Ends. You know, we've been waiting since 2018 when the uh, when the, the first new movie in this trilogy came out to find out where this was all going to go, how it was all going to wind up, and, you know, it's one of those bittersweet things where now we have it. We have the answer. It's out there. It's in the wild. So what did I think about it? How uh, How did it land for me? Did I like it? That's what we're going to get to the bottom of here today. Now, it's worth noting that I'm recording this on Friday, October 8th, uh, 18th. I'm recording this on Friday, October 14th at 1.43 a.m. I went to the Thursday, October 13th, 8 o'clock showing. So I saw the movie a couple hours ago. Uh, I sat with it for a while, came home, I took some notes, and now I'm jumping into this. And here's the deal. When I put up my Halloween Kills review, uh, like basically one year ago to the day, and that was like two and a half hours long, I had seen Halloween Kills twice, and on the second viewing, I took painstaking notes. I'm doing it a little different this time around. I've only seen it once. My notes are from memory, so we're not going to be as in-depth here, but that's okay because, you know, there were complaints last year that my review was longer than the movie, yada yada yada. <laughs> I'm still a verbose motherfucker, so this is probably going to be around an hour long. I hope you're strapped in. I hope you want to talk about it for a while, because I know I do. Um, I also have still not looked at any um, in-depth reviews or thoughts, I will say. I've seen that this movie's not reviewing well on uh, Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes and whatnot. But I didn't know that until after I saw it. But I didn't read anybody's thoughts, so I have zero influence 
zero outside influence to tell me what to think about this. So everything you're going to get is straight from my gut, straight from how I felt about it. I went into this movie totally blind, like I like to do. And what I mean by that is I avoided all of the trailers. I avoided fucking everything about this movie. I don't like to know shit because trailers fucking spoil everything. And I can tell you this. One of my favorite things to do is to avoid all that stuff, then see a movie, and then watch the trailer to see how much they showed. The fucking, basically the the last scene of this movie is in the trailer. It's 100% in the tra trailer, and we'll get there. Um, <laughs> but, you know, even with all the avoiding that I was doing, there were still probably five people who either left YouTube comments or even a buddy of mine texted me and they were like, oh, I'm nervous about this Corey stuff. And me being going into it totally blind, I'm going, who the fuck is Corey? <laughs> I don't know who Corey is or like, what is the, the issue with him? I had no idea. So let's just get into this. The, the introduction is fucked up. Like it's 2019. So it's a year after the events of Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills. And this guy, Corey, now I know who Corey is, he's 21 years old, he's uh, he's babysitting this kid, you know, local kid, his parents are going out for the fucking night or whatever, it's Halloween night, he's babysitting this kid. Long story short, he's showing the kid, he wasn't supposed to, but he's got the kid watching the fucking thing, John Carpenter's the thing, so nice little nod to JC right there, you gotta appreciate that. But you know, um, what the fuck is this? I don't know what that is, I just got paid... 120 bucks for something. Maybe that was Twitch. I don't know. Hey, thanks. Twitch.tv slash 616 Entertainment. <laughs> anyway, he's got this kid watching the thing, and then the kid starts fucking on Corey. He was trying to fuck on me. You know what I'm saying? Some of you know what that reference is. The little kid locks Corey in the attic, and, you know, they're fucking, they're like three floors up. This is a rich family. They got money, you know? So this little shithead kid's got Corey locked in the attic, and Corey freaks out. And he's like, bro, you're going to not only get in trouble, you're going to get me in trouble with your fucking parents. Open the door. Corey winds up kicking the door right as the parents come in. The door hits this little shit kid in the face. He fucking moonsaults off the balcony and splatters on the goddamn floor, dies right in front of his parents. I and my two buddies that I went to see this with, the artist for we know is Mike Charles and Handy Dandy Andy Jarek, the rough and tumble bad boy who never takes no for an answer, always plays by his own rules, and takes the Pittsburgh Steelers all the way to the playoffs on Monday Night Blitz. It was a nice little crew. We were all jaws on the floor. We were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on here? Dude, holy shit. And the reason it was so gnarly is like, it was a practical effect, and I want to give a shout out to David Gordon Green and everybody involved with the effects here. That everything continued to be practical. You know what I'm saying? You could tell it was practical too, because when this body hits the ground, it like bends in a way where it's like, oh, that kid's back is fucking broken. You know, it was gnarly. It was fucking gruesome. So this little kid's dead. And then we jump ahead to like present day. And I leaned over to artists and I was just like, what the f- Because we see Corey like walking down the street or he's driving, he's riding his bike to his fucking job at the dump as an auto mechanic or whatever. And I go, what's he doing out? Shouldn't he be in jail? <laughs> like, what the fuck? We come to find Corey got off with like, I don't like accidental manslaughter or something. Like the, the courts acquitted him, long story short. But the whole town of Haddonfield sees him as the, the guy who killed that kid. And everybody is fucking on Corey, and they don't like him. And everywhere he goes, everybody knows who he is. And it's not, uh, it's not good, good life for Corey. But in the early going here, I'm like, is this whole movie gonna be about Corey? Is that what people were trying to say? Like, oh, I hope this movie doesn't focus too much on Corey. That's not what people were trying to say. We'll get into that, but. <laughs> my my gut instinct, my the question, is this whole movie going to be about Corey? Yeah, it is. I'm serious. If you haven't seen it, 80 to 85% of everything that happens in this movie is about this guy, Corey. 
And that is, it's kind of a tough pill to swallow. And, you know, I could save my final thoughts to the fucking end, but what is the point? Some of you are, are here for the long haul. I appreciate you. Some of you are going to skip to the end to just find out what I think. You don't have to skip to the end. I'll tell you right here. Do I think this is a good movie? Yeah, I do. I, I do think Halloween Ends is a good movie, but hear me out. It's not what I wanted at all. Who the fuck? You know, I'm sure there were a number of scripts written for this movie. Who was like, that's the one we want? You know, it's the last Halloween film. And with, of asterisk, of course. They'll do another one fucking down the line. They'll start it over. Um, they're going to have to start it over. We'll get there. It's the last one. Let's have Michael Myers barely be in it. Let's market this entire movie. And again, I'm going by uh, posters because I avoided the trailers. Let's market this entire movie as Lori versus Michael and it's going to end. The fucking poster is just Michael and Lori. Andy Matichak, a.k.a. Allison, Lori's granddaughter, is not even on the poster. It's just Michael and Lori. Ten minutes of this movie is about Michael Myers versus Laurie Strode. And this movie's two hours long. It's an hour 51, if you want to be exact. I don't know what was going on here. I don't... I have no idea where this came from. And I'm just going to throw this out there as well. When I say I think this is a good movie, but it's not what I wanted. If, if Halloween ends... You know, swap the endings, obviously, or just you'll have to make adjustments clearly. But if Halloween Ends was the second one in the trilogy, and then Halloween Kills was the, was the final part of the trilogy, I think this works way fucking better. I feel like these two scripts got swapped. And I don't understand it. I really don't. I don't fucking get it. I don't... I don't... I... I when the movie ended, and the, the three of us, uh, we went to a, a spoiler-safe territory so we could talk about it, and there was, like, nobody in the lobby. Um, and we're talking about it, and we're like, what was our knee-jerk reaction? How do you feel? My buddy, the artist, my podcast co-host, I go, what did you think? And he put his thumb down and went... Pfft. And I was like, really? Andy, what did you think? And he, I think he thought it was, like, okay, but it, he was questioning, like, what the fuck it was, for the most part. And I, in the moment, I was like, you know what? I didn't hate it. I think I liked it. And as I've been thinking about it, and I started texting my buddy Giuseppe, and I'm explaining that, like, three quarters of this movie, if not more, is, is about just some guy we just got introduced to two hours ago. You know, 45 years of history, we got introduced to this guy two hours ago by the time the movie's over, and it's all about him. I was, I, as I was saying that, I was like, oh, I don't like this. I don't, what I'm typing out, I don't like. So, I've never been in a position like this before, where I don't think this movie was poorly made. I, and I, for the most part, I was pretty fucking entertained. But for this to be the last one, that is what sticks in my craw. You know, my buddy Ethan, Ethan, if you're listening to this, you're out of your fucking mind, and you and I will talk about this when it's not 1.53 in the morning. <laughs> but I saw your Snapchat, bro, and you were just like, uh, David Gordon Green fumbled the bag, maybe the Thorn trilogy isn't so bad after all. First part, I'll give you. Maybe he fumbled it. But maybe the Thorn Trilogy? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> we're not... We are nowhere near Halloween 5 territory, just so we're clear. I gotta get that out of the way. Ethan, I'm gonna text you tomorrow. We gotta talk about this. But... I don't know if you guys can hear Patches Lugosi snoring. He's right next to me and he's asleep. It's past his bedtime. But, but yeah, man. I, uh, I'll get back to the plot and whatnot, but... I didn't want to bury the lead too much. Fuck it. I just wanted to go into it. Yeah, I don't know why they thought this was the way to end it. I understand if you want to do this, but I don't think this is how you close it. So that is a fucking head scratcher to me. But anyway, let's get back to the story. We got this Corey guy. He's fucked up. 
We see Laurie Strode and Allison. They are the surviving people from Halloween Kills. And Lindsay Wallace is there too, looking fine as she want to look, all right? There's no fucking reason why the, I don't know her name, why the actress who plays Lindsay Wallace is as hot as she still is. Holy shit. Just, let's just put that out there. <laughs> God damn. Uh, but yeah, Lori is, you know, she's kind of, she says she's put it behind her. Uh, she's trying to like live a good life and be a good person. She moved to the fucking suburbs because she doesn't want to stay huddled and hidden away. And she's writing a book. She's writing a memoir about her life and about these tragic events and all this stuff. Allison seems to have gotten into uh, some sort of doctor's office as like a nurse or a nurse's assistant or whatever she's fucking doing. Lindsay Wallace is still a bartender um, at the at the old place. So everybody, they're doing their best, you know? And Allison and, and Corey wind up forming a, a relationship and here's how Corey's getting fucked on by the town still the these bullies are they're getting to him and they 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 real they're like oh buy us a six pack and Corey's like no <laughs> and the the kids like oh I know who you are you're that kid killer and they fucking jump him and they beat him up and then Laurie Strode sees what's going on and she gets involved and she sees this guy who's down on his luck and she pulls out a knife and she's like, are you going to do it or am I? And it's, she's not saying kill them. She's saying we're going to fucking slash this kid's tires because he's a little shit kid. So <laughs> they slash his tires. Lori's having this conversation with, um, with Corey and Lori winds up basically introducing Corey to Allison. You know, because they've both kind of, they've been through the ringer and they've they've had these situations pop up. And long story short, Corey and Allison do form a relationship. And at first, and the, my buddy the artist said this too, at first he felt like the it was just terrible writing because Allison seems like really into Corey for really no reason. Like she's, she's laying it on thick and she's hitting on in fucking Allison Andy Matchak is is riddled with babytosis as well uh good god anyway <laughs> I leaned over to my buddy Andy at one point and I was like is it that easy to just like impress a beautiful woman let's just kill kids <laughs> I got a good pop but um yeah fucking Allison and Corey they they start this relationship and it seems like it's coming from nowhere but we eventually we don't realize Allison makes it clear that, you know, much like herself, people look at Allison, people in Haddonfield, they look at Allison and they see that girl who survived that night. And they see that girl who survived Michael Myers. And people always stare at her. She sees that in Corey. Not that he survived Michael Myers, but she sees that like people stare at this guy. People think things about this guy. People are not cool to this guy. But she doesn't see that. She sees somebody who she has a connection to, this kinship with of being looked at in this certain way. And she doesn't see him like that. She just sees a dude. And she sees somebody who maybe will understand her. You know? Um, you know, long story short, Corey gets into it with these bullies again. And they throw him off a bridge! <laughs> Which is, like, out of control... And here's the thing that the artist pointed out. This scene was straight out of it. The fucking Corey gets thrown off a bridge. He gets thrown over the edge of the bridge. And he fucking Mick Foley bumps on the ground below. And then he gets dragged into a fucking sewer pipe. That is straight out of it. To the point that the artist was like, I think that, that was like an ode. Or like a nod. It was so similar. But this is where I go like... Did Corey just get dragged into the sewer by Michael Myers? Are they about to tell us that Michael Myers has been living in the sewer for four years? Yes, that is what they're telling us. That is exactly what they're telling us. Oh, Michael Myers vanished. He's in the fucking sewer. He's been living in the sewer. And um, this is a red flag. You know, we're still pretty early in this movie, but this is a red flag because I don't know. If you guys have watched The History of Halloween, you guys know how I feel I don't ever want you to tell me where Michael is when I don't see him. I don't want you to tell me what he's doing when I don't see him. Don't fucking tell me any of it because it always fucking falls apart. Don't tell me and they told me and that's a red flag. 
So in this goddamn sewer, at least they didn't go full resurrection. Michael didn't have like a doll he sleeps with that he shoved fucking nails into the eyes of. He didn't have a fucking, you know, filleted rat on a dinner plate. They didn't go that far. He's just fucking hanging out in this minging ass sewer. <laughs> so Corey's like, he wakes up because he's unconscious. You know, he's got CTE up the ass. He's concussed as fuck. He wakes up and he's like, I'm in the sewer. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Before he can get out, he gets grabbed by the throat, and now he's face to face with Michael Myers. And there's this moment where Michael looks into Corey's eyes and they zoom in and, you know, we see all this stuff. It's basically like Corey's life flashing before his eyes. And then Corey gets away and he exits the sewer. And it's like. Did Michael let him go, or did Corey get away? What happened there? They had the moment in the eyes. Did Michael feel something, or was he just too weak to do anything? And we find out, we see later, Michael can, like, barely move. This movie establishes, the next time we see Michael, I'm jumping ahead, that he is a fucking shell of himself. This is not the guy who was who John Wick the firefighters in Halloween kills. And this is here, like, I said this to the guys in the lobby after the, after we watched it. I was like, a lot of people were upset that Michael survived the onslaught from the Haddonfield residents at the end of Halloween Kills. And they were like, he would be dead. And if he wasn't dead, he would be so fucked up. Be careful what you wish for, because he's really fucked up in this movie he can barely move he's hunched over he moves slow he gets overpowered by Corey in like an, an hour from now he literally gets fucking like double legged by Corey. he gets like taken down and Corey's not a little guy he looks like he's about 6'1 he's got broad shoulders you know what i'm saying but michael gets like he doesn't get beat up but fucking cory double leg takedowns it takes him down and fucking takes his mask so this this michael myers who i we can only assume has been eating shit rats down in the fucking uh or you know what maybe he's been eating people in the sewer because there's another bum a homeless man who says that Michael drags people into that sewer but they never come out so maybe michael's been eating fucking people i don't know that's kind of cool that something's going on there and we don't know what it is i like that but yeah Corey gets away and we have to wonder whether there was a connection there and they kind of insinuate that there is but then later on they kind of insinuate that there wasn't i i like this ambiguity that i do like but Corey gets out of the sewer and he's instantly accosted by that other homeless man that other bum and that's when he was just like you know he 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 pulls people in there. They never come out. Why'd you come out? And then the fucking homeless man goes, I'm Michael Myers, which I thought was funny as shit. He's like, you go in there and get that mask. I'm Michael Myers. <laughs> which made me think of, all, like, always Sunny fans will get this. It made me think of when Dennis Reynolds is in rehab and he says that he has stigmata, like, from his book, like, the, the wounds of Christ on his hands. And fucking Sinbad and Rob Thomas are in there. And Sinbad walks up to him. And he goes, you're not Jesus. I'm Jesus. And he shows his hands and he's got the stigmata wounds. <laughs> the I'm Michael Myers reminded me of Sinbad going, I'm Jesus. Um, Corey kills this, whole, this old homeless man. Stabs him. Because this homeless man was, again, he was fucking on him. He was, he was trying to make him go back into the sewer. Uh... And he would like they were fighting over a knife, and the homeless man got stabbed and killed. And Corey eventually meets up with Allison, and he's like, "I killed somebody." And it's Allison doesn't realize that he's saying, "I just went and stabbed an old homeless man to death." Allison takes it as him like coming to terms with his past, with the kid who got knocked over the balcony, because. We, we know that that's the case because Corey, again, jumping around, he goes on a fucking rampage and he kills a lot of people. Allison doesn't know that he's doing this. And here's, here's what, where we're going to continue. There's this cop, this older cop who's hitting on Allison. We saw him early in the movie and he's hitting on her again when Corey and Allison meet up and they're like having dinner somewhere. And, um... 
the phrase burn it down, not Seth Rollins burn it down. You know what? Yeah, maybe Seth Rollins burn it down for Allison. She's talking about burn it down in the sense of like, let's get out of this town, fuck this town, fuck these people, let's leave. Let's leave this behind us and start a life somewhere else, you and me, because we understand each other. So she says burn it down, and Corey's like, yeah, burn it down. In Corey's head, burn it down means let's kill everybody. <laughs> so they're not on the same page. So this creepy cop is hitting on Allison, and Corey basically tells him to fuck off. You know, moving on, the fucking cop winds up following Corey. He's tailing him, and Corey parks his, his motorcycle under that bridge, like where the sewer pipe is. And the cop winds up chasing Corey into the sewer pipe, and they're going at it. And fucking Corey, like, grabs this cop. He's got, like, his arms pinned down, and out comes Michael Myers. And Corey's like, show me how to do it. Show me how you do it. Show me. Teach me. And Michael Myers slips, slits this cop's throat and then repeatedly stabs him. And again, it's this is where it's made abundantly clear. Michael can barely fucking move. You know, he's what? At this point, he's like 65, 66, 67. He looks every bit of it. You know, he looks way older, actually. Because, like, you know, people in their 60s can still move. Lori, fucking Jamie Lee Curtis, they make her look old as fuck in this movie. And she sprints down the stairs at one point. I was really impressed. <laughs> But Michael Myers, yeah, he's fucked up. He's like, he's a shambling shell of himself. But he kills this cop. He like tag team kills this cop with Corey. And there's a weird, there's a weird moment where like every time Michael stabs this cop, it almost feels like they're showing us that Michael is feeling something from killing this cop. Obviously he is, because we know Michael, he kills people. That's what he does. But it's almost like he gains strength. Like, after he kills the cop, then he, like, stands up in the way that he used to. Like, a no-wasted motion, like, clear stand-up. And he even, like, puffs his chest out a little bit. Like, he like he feels, you know, he feels powered up by this in a way. They don't spell that out, but the body language was kind of saying that to me. Um, and this is where Corey is still not telling Allison that he's doing all this horrible shit. Um... Although, he kind of did. He said, I killed somebody, and he thought that she knew what he meant, but she didn't. The, Corey and Allison are like, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go. They bang it out. Good for him. Um, <laughs> but Lori Strode knows that this Corey kid's bad fucking news. And uh, she's not going to let this happen. She's not going to let Allison fucking skip out of town with this guy. And we see Lori, like, telling Lindsay Wallace, like, when he came to the house, he being Corey, pronouns pal. When he came to the house and I looked in his eyes, I felt it. I felt the same thing I felt when I looked into like Michael's eyes for the first time. So Lori knows that something is off with Corey. And she didn't feel it before, but something is off now. And we eventually hear somebody, another guy, who I think is the dad of the kid who was killed. He, like, saw Corey walking down the street, and he, like, pulled over, and when he rolled on the window, he was like, hey, hey, and Corey comes over, and he's just gone. Like, his face is blank. There's nothing going on there. And the guy's just like, that, it wasn't Corey. I don't know who that was, but that's not the, that's not the kid that I knew. So, Corey's fucking gone. He's out of his mind. And Lori goes to uh, the house where Corey is squatting. And she kind of has this badass moment where she wakes him up because she's like leaned in a chair up against the wall and she's like thunk, thunk, like leaning up against the wall. And she's basically telling him like, you're not taking Allison away from me. You know, I something is wrong here. You're not taking him away from me. And Corey fucking goes scorched earth. He's like, this, this is all because of you. First of all, you introduced me to Allison. And if we flash back, the knife that Corey used to kill that old bum is the knife Lori gave him to, to slash the tire. So he's like, this is your fault. And you know what? Fucking Michael Myers killing all these people is your fucking fault too. And, you know, he turns around and he's, he's like, he's going to that bad place. And when he turns around to hit her with a one-liner, she's gone. She ghosted him the way Michael ghosts people, which was pretty cool. I liked that they gave Lori that. 
I like that they gave Lori that. That was pretty sweet. Um, but here, here's another fucking weird moment. Is we see now Allison's boss, the doctor, and the slutty like nurse that he's banging. Of course, she's she got the the promotion over Allison. Allison totally earned it, but this little this other nurse got the promotion. Then we find out that they're banging. Of course. So we're back at the doctor's house, and he brought the nurse over, and he's going to nail her. And long story short, I'm not, I don't have to paint the whole picture for you. You watched the movie, or you didn't, but you should have. The nurse is going to get in the shower, and she hears some commotion. And when she comes outside to like find out, like, Dr. fucking Williams, or whatever his name is, Corey's got his back like it's a fucking UFC fight. And he's on his back looking for a rear naked choke. But he's got a bag over the doctor's head and he's stabbing him in the head repeatedly with a corkscrew. Shout out to Josh Hartnett. Where's the corkscrew, man? And Corey's got the fucking, um... He's got, like, the scarecrow outfit on that he wore to the Halloween party with Allison, which I didn't tell you about, but again, you should have seen the movie. You know what I'm talking about. So Corey's in his Michael Myers getup, you know? He's got his costume, too. And he's killing this fucking doctor. And it's gruesome. And so the nurse is like, oh shit. And she runs and she goes to call the cops. And then Michael Myers shows up. And he, apparently he did fucking power up by killing that cop. Because he's able to pick her up with one hand. And he pulls the old Bob gimmick. He stabs her and sticks her to the wall. And he even gives her the old head nod. He's like, oh, I remember doing this. This is some of my old shit, you know? A good deal never goes out of style sort of thing. So Michael has gained a little bit of something from these kills, but this was the scene where Michael and Corey are working in tandem. They are straight up tag teaming. They are doing this together. And there's no other way around it. It's not like Michael doesn't know that Corey is there. Michael's choosing not to kill this Corey guy. And Corey is even like, he's, he's like staring at Michael doing these kills. Like he's trying, he's taking inspiration from it. Like he knows he's watching like a master of the craft and he's like squeezing his hand into a fist while Michael's doing his business. And he's, you know, he's like feeling it. And it's, it's almost like he's taking mental notes but I'm watching this scene of Michael Myers with a young protege, and I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? What is this? We're now easily halfway into this movie. What am, what am I watching? You know? And it was, it was confusing to the point where I started to wonder if Michael was even here. That's how strange it seemed that we are focusing on this Corey guy so much and for this long. I was like, what if there fucking is no Michael? And Corey's just doing all this shit. But that's not the case. No, Michael just has a fucking buddy now. He's got a tag team partner. Which is... I, yeah, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So... We're, we'll skip ahead a little bit. You know, Corey's out of his fucking mind. And he goes back to the sewer pipe. Because I guess after the kills, Michael's just like, well, I'm gonna go home. And he fucking goes back to the sewer to eat shit rats or whatever. Corey's gonna go on a real fucking big deal rampage. And he goes into the sewer pipe. And now he's like, I don't fucking need Michael Myers anymore. This is where he, like, clinches and, like, double-leg takedowns Michael Myers. And he goes, you got something I need. And from the full mount... He takes the mask off of Michael's head and just leaves with it. And then we see Michael do like the classic setup, but like it's it's fucking too late, pal. He just ganked your shit. This kid just came into your house and punked you and took your shit. And I again, I was like, "What am I watching?" I just watched this kid hit a fucking double leg on Michael Myers and take his mask. You know, I said red flag before about knowing where Michael was, but, like, I don't know. So, Corey goes on this fucking rampage. He kills all the bullies, all four of them. 
There's some great kills here. He fucking puts a blowtorch inside one of their mouths. That was awesome. And they don't spend a lot of time on it. We It's out of focus, and we see the torch go in, and the head lights up. But they don't. we don't watch it, like, melt or burn or anything. So, like, I do feel that even though this movie is gory, it's not as gory as Halloween Kills was. It is, you know, it leaves a little bit to the imagination. But, um... He runs over a girl with a fucking truck. And he's doing this dressed as Michael Myers, by the way. Because he is a mechanic, so he's got the suit, but now he's got the fucking, the real deal mask on. So he's just a full-on imposter. And he's killing all these people. And Corey's dad, who was the fucking man, I didn't go super, I didn't go into detail on him at all. But he's this big, fat guy, and he's the fucking man, dude. And he's watching fucking Van Damme movies at one point with his headphones on because his horrible wife is going to yell at him otherwise. Just, Dude, he's just sitting at his desk watching Van Damme movies. This guy's the best. So, unfortunately, he gets shot in the head with a fucking, with his own gun. Because he gives this little Christopher Maltesanti looking kid <laughs> a rifle. And he was just, he was like, here, arm yourself. The kid accidentally shoots him in the head. Um... So Corey, dressed as Michael Myers, kills all of these people. All the bullies. And then he goes to this fucking radio station who he, Corey, and and uh, Allison had a run-in with this radio host. And they fucking are talking about this radio station throughout the whole goddamn movie. W-U-R-G, The Urge. So I remember it. That's how much they talk about it. And... They have a run-in with this guy, and this guy kind of punks them, and Corey goes and kills this guy, you know, still dressed as Michael Myers, he's bashing the guy's fucking head off the table, and his tongue is sticking out, and Corey cuts the guy's tongue off with a pair of scissors, that's fucking gruesome, and then the fucking, the turntable, the record spinning on the turntable, the tongue keeps knocking the needle out of the way, cool spot, cool spot, he kills the fucking, like, radio station secretary or whatever as well. And this is where we just got to take stock of things. If you thought I was exaggerating earlier or you just disagree with me, that well, it's not 80 to 85% Corey. Yeah, it is. Because let's, if you're keeping score, let's look at kills. Michael Myers, two. Corey, nine. Corey has killed nine fucking people at this point. Michael Myers has killed two. One of them was a tiny woman and the other... Was a, was a defenseless cop because Corey was holding him still. This is a, this movie's about Corey. So, it just, it fucking, it gets even weirder. Because, like, Allison and Lori have this blow up with each other. They have this fucking argument. And Allison's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. So she's, like, she's gone. She's going to do whatever she's doing. Allison, I'm talking about. Pronouns, pal. She's going to do whatever she's going to do. She's going to leave. She's packing her fucking bags. Lori... Like, gets her affairs in order. She's got her fucking... She's, like, making sure her script is all on the table and shit. And then she fucking pulls a gun out of her safe. Calls the cops and is like, Hey, I, here's my... Here's the address. I want to report a suicide. And then she's going to blow her brains out. And she doesn't. Because someone's coming up the fucking steps and it's Corey. And when he opens the door, she goes, You really thought I was going to kill myself? Bang, bang! And she shoots him fucking twice. Badass moment. It doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever to do this whole theatrical thing. It was, you know, it was just fucking, it was movie shit. It was grandiose, whatever. But Lori don't miss. She shoots him twice in the fucking collarbone. And uh, he's fucked. He's in trouble. He's on his knees in front of her. And there's like another weird moment because Lori's got him fucking like dead to rights on his knees Two shots in his collarbone and his shoulder. And then she like throws the gun away. And is like, you came here to kill me, so do it. And it's like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? Just fucking blitz this kid. Get him out of here. I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck this was supposed to be. So that's when the, they revisit like the argument that Lori and Corey had earlier. Lori, Corey. How about that? They rhyme. And Corey drops the line on her again about Allison. Like, if, if I told you, if I can't have her, no one can. And Corey stabs himself in the fucking throat, handle deep with his knife. He just takes himself out, stabs himself in the throat. So Allison comes to the fucking house and she opens the door and she sees Lori standing there with the knife in her hand, covered in blood and Corey bleeding out. 
And Allison's like, I can't fucking believe you did this. You bitch. You fucking killed my boyfriend. And I was going to fucking leave town with him. And But here's, you know what? This is a good point right here. When I said that there was a moment in the eyes between Michael and Corey, and like, was there a connection made? Did Michael put his essence into Corey? I don't think so. Because when Lori shot Corey twice in the shoulder, when, these aren't deadly shots, they're in the shoulder and like in the collarbone area. Corey's incapacitated by those two shots. He's on his knees. Michael would have walked right through those. And another one. The radio station, before he, Corey killed the host, Allison and Corey are on top of the radio station and they're having this moment and Corey like, is making it abundantly clear that he has snapped. So he like leaps over the edge of the fucking building and Allison's like, what the fuck? And she looks over the edge and Corey's like, you know, like, I'm not interested in mortality. So he's totally full of his own shit. He thinks he's the fucking second coming of Michael Myers. He hangs from his fingers and drops maybe eight feet, ten feet if we're being generous, and hits the ground hard and he sells the leg. He hits the ground hard and it hurts him. Again, wouldn't have hurt Michael. He would have gone right through that. So Corey is not this force of nature the way that Michael is in any way, shape, or form. Corey's just fucking hopped up on the smell of his own shit. So, yeah, Allison comes in and is like, what the fuck did you do, uh, Aunt Lori? What, you fucking stabbed Corey, blah, blah, blah. But Michael Myers is here. Now that we've got 10 minutes left in this movie, Michael Myers is here. So he walks in. Corey's not dead. He's still bleeding out. Michael leans over. He grabs Corey by his head and he snaps his fucking neck. So that was some justice. And you know what? He put the mask on before he did it so Corey could look into the eyes of the real deal. That was nice to see. I liked to see the imposter getting done in by the real deal. But it's way too late. It's, it's you know... This is going to sound negative, and it is, I suppose, but I don't, I don't want it to come off like I hated this movie or anything, but it was way too late to save this movie. To have Michael kill the imposter, you know, the movie's an hour 51, he probably killed Corey at an hour 40. So, Michael and Laurie immediately just get into the final battle. There's no cat and mouse between Michael and Laurie at all, really, like... There's one little spot where she's like hiding behind a door and then she gets the jump on him and they go back and forth. And for as short as this battle is, it's brutal. Michael like turns the garbage disposal on and he, he sticks Lori's hand into it and like fucking it eats up a couple of her fingers, which is gnarly. They're fucking their stabs going on. You know, long story short, Michael winds up basically pinned down to the table with knives through either of his hands. He's pinned down. He's fucked. Lori tips the refrigerator onto him, so now his legs are pinned down, too. Lori stabs him under the fucking armpit, like, handle deep with a fucking butcher knife. She stabs him in the heart, and she's got him totally fucked. She's got him dead to rights. And she looks at him, and she's like, you know, I used to think you were the boogeyman. You know, I used to think you were a monster. And then she takes his mask. Oh, you know what I did forget to mention? In the brutal battle great moment where she she's gonna get him with the knitting needle again and he actually turns the tables and he ends up like jamming it into her face he he sticks it into her cheek that was fucking cool great callback but a reversal callback so yeah she she's got him pinned down and she's cutting this promo and she takes his mask off and she's looking at him and she's like i used to think you were the boogeyman but you're not you're just a man who's about to stop breathing. And she slits his fucking throat. And it's gnarly. Like, she slits his throat. We can hear him gurgling. You know, we've been hearing, like, the... <sighs> through the movie, you know, for the fucking couple minutes Michael was on screen. We've been hearing the breathing. We're not hearing the breathing anymore. Now it's, like, <clears throat> the fucking blood, like, leaking out of his fucking his throat hole but michael being the force of nature that he is she's like you're just a man he's just like oh yeah he sits up 
with the throat slit and fucking like rips the knife out of one of his hands so his hand is just fucking shredded and luckily allison is here and she like they team up on him and michael's grabbing Lori by the throat and he's like and she and she's like do it go ahead do it and he's not he's not able to allison like breaks michael's arm across the countertop like compound fracture bone broken in half and all this shit and the fucking throat slit stabs and then they also Lori slits his wrists like there's there's no way there's no way he gets out of this so michael dies they killed him stabbed him how many fucking and, and still all the damage from 2018 all the damage from kills he was already a shell and now all this and michael myers is fucking dead they slit his throat, they slit his wrist, he's bleeding out, there's nothing left, he's fucking dead. And I'm not talking about his eyes are gonna open, I'm not talking about he's gonna sit up, I'm not talking about any of it, he's fucking dead, it's over. And then all the cops show up, including the old ass sheriff guy, and uh, they fucking parade the cops, and Lori, and Allison, and the old sheriff, and that badass fucking black guy, sheriff guy from Halloween Kills, who does nothing in this movie, completely useless character from top to bottom, hard to believe there was a plan for him at all because they do nothing with him. He shows up too. And he says, you know what, this is okay. And they parade Michael's corpse through the streets of Haddonfield. Literally, he's strapped to the roof of a police car. And they parade his body around like fucking Frankenstein. I don't know how many of you have seen the original Frankenstein. He's not a corpse because he's still alive. But the townspeople pick up the monster and they parade him around. Um, that's what they do to Michael's corpse here. And he's fucking dead. And they wind up taking him to the dump where Corey worked. And they, they load Michael's body onto the industrial shredder. Which those things, I don't know if you know about these things. They shred cars. They shred trucks. They shred storage containers. They put Michael's body in there and they fucking turn it on. And we see the corpse of Michael Myers crushed and shredded to pieces. We see his body get pulled in, shredded, and then we see his head explode as, as it is pulled down into the steel teeth of the industrial shredder. Not only is Michael Myers dead, but he's gone. He's finished. It's over. And uh, this, is a, this is a heavy moment because this is what I wanted. You know, I said this movie wasn't what I wanted at all. This is what I wanted specifically. I wanted Michael Myers to fucking die. And I wanted, if Laurie Strode died, that was okay too. Or it's okay if she lives, but this needs to end and it does end. This distinctively ends and they had the balls to not throw a cliffhanger on it. You know, the end of this movie, we see Halloween ends in the blue text, which is a real nice Halloween 3 callback. I don't know how many of you caught that. The blue text in that font. How about it? Um, we The title Halloween ends comes up and then the Halloween disappears and only ends stays on the screen. It is over. You know, but they, sh they shred the body and... Haddonfield, the people of Haddonfield showed up to see the body get shredded. And that is a nice piece of justice for Halloween Kills and everybody who had been put through the ringer. And there were there were some nice callbacks here and some nice moments. We saw the, the little kid who was being babysat in Halloween 2018, that little funny kid. He was there. We saw the lady from Halloween Kills... Who was I also the grave, uh, the cemetery keeper, groundskeeper, I want to say, or just owner or whatever, from 2018. And then she was in kills and she took the light tube to the throat. She survived. And she's there when Michael's corpse is shredded. So she got to see justice as well. That was nice. I liked that a lot. Um, yeah, man, my, my take is like, I needed them to stick the landing. And this is what I this is what I said. I this came to me while we were in the lobby and we were talking about it. 
all I said coming into this movie is that, number one, it needs to end. Number two, I really hope they stick the landing. And I think they did. Now, hear me out. I'm not forgiving everything that I think is weird or that I don't like about this movie at all. Hear me out. When I say stuck the landing, picture it like this, you know? This fucking plane has been in the air. Let's say this plane's been in the air since 2018 when this new trilogy started. Smooth ride through 2018. Maybe a little bit turbulence on kills. Depends on how you feel. I liked kills quite a bit. You know, everybody has their own take. Halloween ends... I think it has a photo finish because at the end of the day, you can take a photograph of the plane after after it landed, you know? So the landing was stuck. But the entire, you know, if we're calling Halloween ends the whole, the whole deal, the descent was shaky as fuck. The landing gear broke off. Both wheels broke the fuck off. And this plane skidded across the runway. We didn't touch down nicely. The entire runway is torn the fuck up. All the cement and concrete is fucking ruined. The grass is on fire that surrounds the runway. The engines are smoking. The pilot passed out at the controls. But at the end of the day, because Michael is dead and they didn't tease anything else, you can still take a photograph of the plane at the edge of the runway. And I think that's that's probably that's the saving grace. The fact that they actually had the balls to end it mixed with the fact that I don't think this is a bad movie. I just don't like that it's the last one. Keep this from being a a, a bad movie in my opinion. Um, is it one of my favorites? No, it's not. I just did my ranking the Halloween movies, and I think I put Kills at 5 and um, 2018 at 4, I want to say. It, again, it's only been a couple hours. I need a fucking year, at least, to sit on this to know. But I think that this is below 2018 and Kills. If I, if I was forced to like put it somewhere right now, I think it's below those. But it, no, as... As a whole, I don't think the movie's bad. It's just not what the fuck I wanted. And I don't I don't know why this is where they went. For the last one. If this was kills, I get it. And then ends would be what kills was. But except instead of Michael getting away, they fucking the, the whole town takes him out, and maybe then they toss him in the industrial shredder. You know, whereas then you've got a Halloween Kills where Michael came back in 2018 and then a, a copycat guy was inspired by him. That To me, that fucking makes more sense, you know? Um, yeah, I don't think the last movie in the franchise, Asterisk, of course. You know what? We don't have to put an asterisk on the on saying it's the last movie in this timeline because this timeline's over. Again, business-wise, they'll reboot this someday. Or just start fresh somewhere. But the last one should not have barely been about Michael Myers. And it's like, when I say barely, I fucking mean barely. So, I don't know. I don't know what the what the thing was there. And you know what? There were people <laughs> there were people who had theorized that the radio tower was going to have been like the reason Michael was doing what he was doing. There were people who said that Michael Myers was like a fucking robot or something or that the radio tower was controlling him. There were people who were theorizing that the radio tower was was going to be the reveal that like Silver Shamrock is to, is to blame for all this and it was like they own the radio station. I had people commenting on my Kills review last year that Tommy Doyle wasn't dead and that the end of Kills didn't happen. Uh, none of that was true. None of it at all. So I don't, you know, if any of you have been following some of those YouTube people who are telling you fucking, you know, Michael Myers is a robot and all this and all that. Careful who you get your fucking news from. Um, I'll just leave it at that. But it's going to be interesting to see how time 
treats Halloween ends. Because I know, again, I didn't read the words, but I saw the review scores. And I saw that this is has like a 48 on Metacritic and I, I think lower on Rotten Tomatoes. So it seems like the general consensus is that critics are not liking it, which I don't give a flying fuck. I, critics, critics didn't like Halloween Kills. I liked Halloween Kills quite a bit. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how time is to Halloween ends and if time is kind to it. Or if time is is not very kind to it. And I I might like this movie even less the second time I watch it. Or now knowing what it is, I might be able to accept it more for what it is. But it's nothing I don't think is ever really going to wash the taste out of my mouth that this is not what I wanted. And it's a head scratcher. You know what I mean? So that is just, uh, it's an interesting place to to leave this and i feel i've been saying since halloween 2018 came out you know like if they stick the landing and they really they handle this well i might finally let go of what is my personal canon my personal canon is one two h2o you know michael fucking breaks out 20 years later no 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 he he breaks out and he comes after Lori, and then Halloween 2, you know, fucking the hospital deal. 20 years later, comes back, Lori cuts his fucking head off. For me, since 1998, that has been my canon. You know, Resurrection I immediately didn't take seriously. Rob Zombie's another universe entirely, who fucking cares? And I was like, if they do this the right way, maybe I'll accept it. And right now, where I stand now... It's hard to say, and I'm going to need more time with it. But right now, I think my personal candidate is probably still 1-2-H2O. The thing that I really liked about H2O, though, <clears throat> and what made me accept it was the finality. Lori got him. She cut his fucking head off. Killed him. And Ends also has that finality, which that is important to me, to wrap it up. And I, I think... You know, some people might not like the fact that Michael Myers dies. Oh, Michael Myers doesn't die. Everything needs to fucking die at some point, okay? And I think having Michael Myers go... Again, maybe the, we didn't have to have a whole movie about somebody else in Michael's franchise. But having, uh, having Michael go down at the hand of his nemesis, Laurie Strode, I think is very respectful... Not only to Michael Myers, but to Laurie Strode, you know? This, Michael Myers, you know, this wasn't Halloween 4, where Michael Myers was killed. Not by Laurie Strode, not by Jamie, not by Rachel. He was just shot by a bunch of cops, and he fell in a hole, you know? Don't even worry about Halloween 5. Halloween 6, this wasn't Halloween 6, he didn't get beat up by a pipe by Paul Rudd. This wasn't Halloween Resurrection where we had no ending anyway. This wasn't um, Halloween 2 Rob Zombie where Michael just got shot by a bunch of cops again. <laughs> you know? He was taken out by his nemesis. And I do, I do like the fact that Lori survives. I'm totally okay with that. She did not need to die. I just needed the story to end. And it did. And she lives, and it seems like maybe she'll have a happy life with that sheriff guy. Whether they're just fucking buddies or whether they're gonna start a relationship, who knows? They'll probably just be, like, there for each other. The only thing that could even, like, be considered a tease is that at the end of her book, she finishes it. And she's like, evil, like, never dies, it just changes shape. Which is a nice, um, you know, reference to Halloween as a whole because you know but in the scripts michael's always referred to as the shape it was nice to see jai jude courtney in the beginning credits as the shape i liked that a lot was also very nice to see nick castle in this movie pops up at the bar at the halloween party he's got a funny line and he does it like do you like what you see or see anything you like you know and he opens his fucking jacket and he's wearing like a slim good body looking deal <laughs> that was cool 
I leaned over to artist and Andy and I was like, you know who that was? I was, I was so, so happy to see him. Um, the, yeah, but the only thing that could be considered a tease is that like evil never dies. It just changes shape. And then we see that Lori kept the mask. Not that that means anything though, but they're just, you know, it's just there. It's just a nice thing to close on. But here, here's a question. And I don't know if I, I don't remember if I said this earlier, what the fuck is with Lindsay Wallace? What the fuck is with Lindsay Wallace's fine ass? Still, you know, she doesn't die. She doesn't even like survive any sort of showdown. You know, she she goes through that horrific situation Halloween kills and she hides in the fucking forest and she evades Michael Myers. And then we see her in this movie multiple times, but that's it. That's it, that's all. We just see her. She has no finish to her story. She's just there. What the fuck was the point of keeping her alive if she was going to bear no mind to this movie at all? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Tommy Doyle is mentioned once in this movie. <laughs> and I'm not calling him Tommy Jarvis this time out, god damn it. Um, now I'm doing callbacks to my own shit, you know? But... Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a strange feeling, man, to feel like the that this was a pretty good horror movie, but that this is not what I wanted Halloween ends to be. I did not want First of all, I don't ever want a fucking Halloween movie that's not about fucking Michael Myers. And I say that having not been born when Halloween 3 came out, so I didn't have a say on the matter, all right? I quite enjoy Halloween 3, but I think we can all agree it fucking like barely makes sense that it's called Halloween 3. It's it's all, you know, it is what it is. You know the backstory. It was going to be an anthology blah blah. blah. Um and I do like Halloween 3 quite a bit. But now that we're in a fucking Halloween with Michael Myers world again to have a movie especially the last one and it's just not about Michael Myers. I don't understand that decision at all. And I remember reading like six or eight months ago, I think it was an interview with David Gordon Green where he was like, I think I remember him saying like a lot of people are going to hate Halloween ends. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? Why are you saying this? What did you do? So it's not like he didn't know that this was going to be divisive. He knew. I just read an interview with John Carpenter the other day where he was asked if he likes this movie He's, and his response was, yeah, yeah, I do. It's an interesting movie. And you, when someone describes something as interesting, it doesn't always mean it's bad, but it means that they, to them, it's like, you know, well, how else can you say it? Well, this is interesting. So, strange, man. It's just a strange feeling. It's over. It's over. Halloween ended. Michael Myers is fucking dead. Allison drives away. God, she's gorgeous. Allison drives away into uh, wherever the fuck she's going. She leaves town. And you know what? That's a nice little thing there as well. Allison leaves on her own. She doesn't have some murderous fuck face with her. She's going to go live her life. And Lori lets her go. And I think that that's a, that's a good thing. It's, it's good for both of them. Allison needed to get the fuck out of Haddonfield. Lori doesn't have anything to hide from in Haddonfield anymore. And you know what? I, there was a great moment. Again, if I had watched this twice and I was taking like notes on every scene, we would have been here twice as long. Cause I'm obviously wrapping up now. But there were, there were some great moments, man. There was the moment where um, Lori's exiting the grocery store. And this woman, like, makes a sharp comment to her. And Lori turns. She's like, what? The woman makes a sharp comment again. And she's looking at her. She's like, this puzzled look on her face. And then this woman motions over. And she was just like, you did this. You know, she's your neighbor. You don't even know her name, do you? And that's when the camera shows the cemetery groundskeeper slash the light tube in the throat woman. That's when we see her for the first time. And that's when we are shown the fact that she survived. She survived that and her voice is gone. Michael Myers took her voice and 
that woman says, like, you brought him here. You were teasing a mentally handicapped man. He came out, blah, blah, blah. You know, so... <laughs> it's ridiculous, but... Because we know that that's not what happened. But again, it's just the story of, you know, the 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 game of telephone. You know, the, every call that comes through, the story is a little different sort of thing. We know that Michael didn't come looking for Lori. The fucking, fucking Dr. San, Dr. Sartan, or whatever the fuck his name was. Who's still a dog shit character. Never, that never paid off. Um, he brought... Michael like directly to her doorstep in 2018 that was not a random thing and that wasn't Michael being like you know who I never got <laughs> so yeah I don't I don't think this was as good as kills or 2018 I don't even necessarily think this is a bad movie but this is not what I wanted out of Halloween ends the only thing that I got that I wanted was the fact that it is over and Michael's dead and if, if, I, if I can give it points, those are the points that I'll give it. They killed Michael. They closed the book. And it seems pretty fucking clear to me that, you know, eventually they're going to do another one because that's just how business works. And, you know, cash has got to keep coming in. But I feel like they're going to have to... They're going to have to do something else. They can't... This This is over. This timeline is over. I would I would love if we never fucking hear the name Laurie Strode again. I don't ever want to hear Dr. Loomis again. The fact of the matter is they will do Michael Myers again whenever they fucking relaunch this and reboot it and start over because you, the fucking the blue jumpsuit and the white mask is merchandise. Um so they will do that again, but I don't even know what do you like can you call another movie halloween how many fucking movies are we gonna have that are just called halloween not even a fucking name or not even a number not even a maybe they would have to go with a subtitle or maybe they don't even call it halloween maybe call it maybe they call it the boogeyman maybe they call it um you know they uh, one good scare maybe they call it the night he came home Maybe they play with that, you know? In in 1978, the movie Superman came out. And then Superman 2, Superman 3, Superman 4. Uh, in 1989, the movie Batman comes out. Then you got Batman Returns. But eventually, you switch it up. In 2000, 2008, we got The Dark Knight. It wasn't called Batman. It was called The Dark Knight. In 2013, we didn't get another movie called Superman. We got a movie called Man of Steel. They switched it up. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying here? This is all just conjecture for the future. Who fucking knows? This movie literally came out like six hours ago and I'm already talking about the eventual reboot. <laughs> but, you know, this is just where our mind wanders. But yeah, guys, I think my, my canon is probably still 1-2-H-2-O, but I need time to sit with it. And I don't want anybody to think that I hated this movie because I don't. I don't think this is a bad movie. It's just not what I wanted. And that's bittersweet. It's bittersweet to get the finality, but not in the way that I wanted it delivered, you know? So this is where I pass it over to you. And I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what you felt about it. I want to know how you took this whole Corey situation. I want to know how you took the death of Michael Myers. I want to know how you felt about all of this. Please let me know in the comments. And, you know, anybody can get in the comments and say, Sucked! Bad movie! Train wreck! Give me something to work with. Give me... Tell me why you felt the way you did. You know, fucking... How deep are we? I've been going for over an hour now. Give me a couple sentences. Let me know why you feel the way you do. If you liked this movie, tell me why. If you hated it, tell me why. If you're in the middle, tell me why. That's what I want to know. But there you go, Dan Dance. That's my uh, that's my review of Halloween Ends. Now, the his I shouldn't even be saying this yet, but the history of Halloween Part Six will happen. And that will cover this trilogy, 2018 Kills and Ends. I needed 
We needed to see it all through before I could do the final chapter, part six. Maybe, maybe next year. Maybe October 2023 is when part six comes out, you know? Because we need to sit with this. We need time. As I always say, you can't do a retrospective on something that came out yesterday. <laughs> you can do a review on it. You can talk about what you thought. You talk about what you did and didn't like. But a re that's not a retrospective. A retrospective is to look at the making of. Where did it come from? How was it made? Who was involved? What were the fucking, you know, the hitches in the road? You know, um... That's a retrospective. This is a review. So with the, 2018 kills and ends, we, they will get the retrospective treatment. It just needs time. It's got to sit. It's got to simmer. It's got to marinate. It's got to fucking cook before I can serve it to you, all right? But I'm not done serving you Halloween content this year. Next week. Halloween's best kills. That's where we're going. Some of the best kills in Halloween history. We're going to take a look at them. It's going to be fucking cool. And if anybody's still here, guys, I'm building towards a goal. Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment. I want to do in-depth horror retrospectives for you. On Freddy Krueger, Jason, Chucky, Ghostface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I want to do games for you guys. I want to do Silent Hill. I want to do Outlast. I want to do The Suffering. I want to do Siren. I want to do Fatal Frame. I want to cover all these games for you in my deep diving style and at the time I'm recording this, we're only 19 patrons away. 19 people can sign up for as little as two bucks a month. And I will have, that guarantees an entire season of Scream Sequence. This is not 616 Thunder, where I'm going to be delivering a Let's Play style show every week. We're talking about in-depth retrospectives, Triangle X Squared Circle style, the history of style, life and death style. The in-depth shit that I do best. A full season of that. If you are one of the hundreds of people who has said, like, oh, you know, hope the show gets made, can't wait to see it. If a fraction of a fraction of the people who left those comments just signed up for the lowest level, even two bucks a month, we'd be three seasons deep by now. Consider it. Think about it. I love doing this work for you guys, and I want to do as much as possible. Thanks for listening, guys. I needed to get this out now. If you're listening early on Patreon, I appreciate you a great deal. If you're listening on YouTube, I appreciate you a great deal. Bittersweet, right, guys? It's over now. Bittersweet. I love you. And I'll see you next time. There you go, Dan Dans. If you're still here, here's a little outro for you. I, uh... I've been thinking a lot about Halloween Ends. I recorded that review a week ago. I put it up on Patreon, and now it's here for you guys on YouTube. I've been thinking a lot about Halloween Ends, and I have not rewatched it yet, but I still feel pretty confident in what I said here, in the fact that, like, I don't think Halloween Ends is a bad movie. This just is not what I wanted out of the last Michael Myers movie. You know what I mean? If this was another sequel and then eventually we'd get to Michael Myers dying, again, the last Michael Myers movie, they'll reboot it eventually, but the OG Michael is gone, he's dead, they crushed him, finito, bye-bye, sayonara. I don't think this is a bad movie. I think over time I may end up liking it even more, or maybe the parts that I don't like are going to be amplified even more. We'll see. Like I said during the review, it's, um, it's going to be interesting to see how time treats Halloween ends. But yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty confident in the fact that I don't hate this movie. I don't. And if you do, that's fine. It's not my job to change your mind, and I don't give a fuck. If you like the movie or not, I'll talk to you about it in the comments, but it doesn't hurt my feelings if you don't like it. I didn't make the fucking movie. You know what I mean? So thanks for checking out my review of Halloween Ends. Next week, we're going to take a look at some of the best kills in Halloween history. And uh, I think that's going to be a great time as well. Now, the patch man and I got to get out of here, but he's got a brand new haircut. and I think he wanted to show it off. So he came in the room while I was doing my outro. What do you think, Patch? You feeling good? We love you, and we'll see you soon.